Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out Mimo V2 Flash. Now, I like this model because it is a big 309 billion parameter model over here, but it only uses 15 billion active parameters. So it is fast. And that's what they say right here. It says designed for high speed reasoning and agentic workflows. And I've actually been using it for the past day and I really like the results so far. Traditionally, my coding model has been Quen 3 Coder, the big one, 480B. However, I've switched to this one and it's it's just like it, it's just much faster. Obviously, it's going to take me a bit longer to find out exactly if it's better, but we're going to do some nice tests here to find out exactly how it is. Now, this model is really fun because it's made by Xiaomi and Xiaomi, they're the third largest manufacturer of smartphones in the world. They also make cars, they make pretty much everything in China. They're known as the Apple of China. So let's ask Xcreate. Xcreate is an AI image generation app and it uses Dead Image Turbo. We're also gonna be adding in video, anything creative, we're gonna be adding it into there. So I asked it, I gave it a prompt to Xiaomi and this is what it made. A nice, almost beautiful text, you can kind of Almost see that it's a little bit of AI blurriness around here, but generally it looks really good. And that looks like one of their phones. And that is really fun because there's a bit of drama going on in the scene. Apparently, um, a, an employee of Kimi K2, he was just giving his thoughts on the model and it does borrow from DeepSeek 3.2 Auto exact just one in a bit and they blocked him. So that was a fun uh, reaction to, to that. I actually asked Kimi K2, I said, is it good to block your competitor if they're trashing you on Twitter? They're pretty much saying it's just better to ignore than block. So blocking makes sense if you're har being harassed or it's crossing into personal attacks. I don't think they were being personal or abusive, but I guess, you know, it's all noise. You know, if you're trying to get your product out there and people are critiquing you, maybe you'll get down in a mud fight. So we're going to be asking what Mimo thinks of this as well. So we're going to do some nice logical challenges. And just speaking of the benchmarks as well, if you look at it over here, they pretty much have lined up Kimi K2 as their competitor. So I can see why there is a beef, bit of beef going on. I mean, the, the two largest Chinese companies in the world just, just battling it out. You got Xiaomi and you got Kimi K2 who are backed by Alibaba. Again, giant behemoth over there. And you can see their tests over here. It's very, very similar. You can see 22, 23, 94, 94. It's even comparative to GPT-5. So open AI, it's got Claude Sonnets. It's up there, 94 beats Claude Sonnets, 87. So this is the model architecture that they were saying that they use. Now again, I like it because it's a 15B, which means it runs really, really fast. But the guy from Community 2 was just pretty much saying that it's been done before. And interestingly enough, they did actually poach one of the engineers from DeepSeek. So I can see why, you know, to be honest, everyone's pretty much moving to the DeepSeek model. Kimi say too, they use DeepSeek's model and um, the new um, Mistrals, they use um, Kimi, they use DeepSeek's model, except they use the version two. They use a really old version, the one that came out, but everyone's using um, DeepSeek's model. And they're kind of like just combining the best of the best to see what's going on. So that's probably enough of me explaining how it is. Let's jump in and see how it runs locally. So, I've got Mimo V2 Flash. I've got the Q8 and it has actually been, um, it is an FP8 model as it, as it is. So I've got Q8 and I've got Q6 quant to see how good it is. So the first question I'm going to ask is, if a competitor trashes you on Twitter, is it better to block them or try to defend yourself? So it's going to go ahead and load the model into memory and it should be pretty fast because it's not actually that big. If we look at the size of it, we can see that the big guy is 300 gigabytes and the smaller guy is 250. And that is really good because my wife likes using Quinn 3, the, the big 200 billion parameter model. And this one is 250 gigabytes. So potentially I can have both these models in memory and being inference at the same time without having to load and unload. So that's a feature I'll be bringing into inference very soon, but I should see the results. So it's fast, look at that 20, 37 tokens a second. It's just flying through the screen. Kind of gives me that GPT 120B vibes, except I guess it's maybe a lot more parameters in there. So it's going to be smarter. So the golden rule is don't get into a mud fight. If you wrestle with a pig, you both get dirty. So that's just a kind of comprehension test. Now we're going to jump in and do some actual reasoning tests. And 
I always ask this test nowadays because it's just such a good one because all of the models still get it wrong. So last time I tested ChatGBT and Claude, they got the answer wrong with this one. And this is the surgeon who's the boy's father says, I cannot operate on the boy. He's my son. Who is a surgeon to the boy? So we're going to ask Mimo V2 Flash this question. And straight your answer that said it is the boy's mother. I'm going to see how confident it was. It was 88.28% certain it's the mother. And that isn't actually that high. A lot of the models are like 99.95 that it thinks it's the mother. I'm going to switch the answer to father and see if it tries to correct itself or if it goes for it. So I made it say father instead. So this is the classic riddle that plays on the assumption that the surgeon must be male. The answer is given directly in the first sentence of the prompt. So it knows that the answer is the father. It just needs to be asked. It needs to be forced down that rabbit hole. So this is actually a good point. I'm going to switch up and see how it performs using batching. So batching allows you to run multiple inferences at the same time by running them all together straight through the forward path. So you get multiple tokens being produced at the end of it. And we can see that when they're both running together, it's going around to 24 tokens a second. I have actually had it perform a little bit faster. It's just at the moment I'm uploading it to Hugging Face, so a little bit of my resources are being resourced. So we've upped from 35 tokens a second to combine 24 times to 48 tokens a second. And we're running two inferences at the same time. So again, it's a really, really fast model. 20 tokens a second is you know, faster than what some of the other models run at. So the fact that it's going really, really well looks good. And just look at this story. This story is about Elera. Yep, I've heard that name before. This is the old man lived in the house of a lake. So interestingly enough, this one didn't have a title. So it's just jumping into the story. One afternoon, a girl named er Elera, whose curiosity was fiercer than her fear, pushed open the creaking gate. It's a nice, beautiful story. Thump, thump, deep in the woods. It's, it's a nice story. So storytelling is good. And if you are looking for creativity, sometimes bouncing your ideas on different models is good. And we can see that with batching, it went up and we produced 24.5 plus 24.5. So over 48 tokens a second. So that is good that it runs with batching. I'm going to now switch it up and see how it does using tool calls. So I'm going to enable server tool calls. So I've got a tool called get web page content. It's just a Python script. It just downloads the website and gives, removes the HTML tags and just gives the results back to the engine. So I'm going to say, what is inferencer.com? So I'm expecting it to make a tool call, go on inferencer and tell me what the results is. So that is, uh, <laughs> it's already messed up. It says, I'll help you find out what inferencer. So it messed up the I. So I told it it's inferencer and now it's called frenza.com inferencer.com. Okay. Now it's corrected itself. It's calling inferencer.com. It's downloading the website and it's summarizing the content. So it does run if it actually respects your token. Now I want to see why it really messed up with that word. So it was hundred percent. Well, that's actually really good actually. So we got this token entropy button over here. We click on that. It tells you and it shows you any of the tokens which have high entropy, which means there's a lot of contentious tokens. That means it's not too sure about the answer. It's really good to find out what's going on there. So we can see that it wasn't actually sure about if it should be called N Frenza or a different word. So the alternative 10 tokens that you had was Ava N WWW. Maybe when you're giving it websites that it doesn't know about, it's going to make these kind of mistakes, which is a shame because it actually was able to make the tool call and it was able to summarize it in the end. But maybe you're going to have to do some programming on top of its tokens to enforce that it's calling the right website. So if you ask it about website, maybe in the code, we're going to get into this. We're going to actually put in some prompt programming to enforce these business decisions to make sure it comes up with the right answer. So it was very, very fast, 37 tokens a second. Nice, good summary over here. It's just, it failed at the first thing. Now I'm going to switch up to the Q8 version just to see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to say, what is inferencer? So now the Q8 version says Averencer. So it seems to be like an underlying issue, but tokens a second, we're getting almost 32 tokens a second, and that's Q8, so it's really, really high quality quant. In my use case, I found that Q6 and Q8 were pretty much like very, very similar. And in fact, we're gonna jump in and do some coding tests to see if it can make up for itself, because that's I have been actually using it as a coding model. 
So I'm going to ask some easy questions. And I'm going to switch up to harder ones. So here we're saying we got um, a map, which is kind of like a hash map between a string and a, and a list of strings. So can I just get the first one? And it says, no, you can't do it because it's keyed. So you actually need to use the actual identifier, the string identifier here. And that's the right answer. If you did want to get it, you can use begin and second. So that would work there. And you check if it's empty. So that's the right answer there. Next, we're going to see if it knows a bit of Swift. So I actually had tool calls enabled here and it was actually checking the Swift documentation to find out if you can mix Swift and C++. So it's going down a, a mad tangent. I like to disable tool calls when I'm just doing coding, unless I specifically give it the website. So let's just run it again without tool calls anymore. And it says in Swift, int pause a truncation rounding towards zero, and it's not a floor operation. And it's actually giving you the result. Why? Because if you use negative numbers, you're going to get a different response. So it got that one correctly. So it's fundamentally known stuff. This one is slightly trickier, actually. So the issue is like called by Unicode characters, emojis, and all that kind of stuff. And it says you need to switch to using UTF-16 instead of UTF-8, which is the default. So that was the issue there, string.count. And it suggested that I do string.utf16.count, which is actually the right answer. Now, this one is a harder one, and it's to do with regex. And to date, the only model that has actually got it correct was GLM 4.6, and that one is a thinking model. So this question here is all to do with about grouping view quantization. So for example, if I load the Windows version of Inferencer, we've got this function which returns the groups by quantization. So if inside Inferencer here, you go search for, for example, Llama. Yeah, that's actually a good one. Search for, let's say, Llama 3.2. It's got the 2-bit, 3-bit, 4-bit, 5-bit. It's got all the quants version. So you click on Downloads, and then you can choose which version you can download. Slightly different to MLX, where it's just kind of like you get the folder, and all the model inside there is the one you want to use. So this one, you actually choose the quantization. With this bug that we were having, um, we weren't getting matches for Q4 underscore 1 and Q8 underscore 0. So the problem was we're doing a regex and we're specifically looking for K, M or 0. So let's just see if it can figure that out. So here is the corrected code and it has actually kept the KM0, so this actually won't work. So it hasn't fixed it. Now again, Quinn Free Coder failed at this, DeepSeek 3.2 failed at this. Kimi K2 Thinking and Minimax, those guys, they know the answers because they're showing you they're working out when they go through and think through it, but they were writing like thousands and thousands of tokens and they didn't want to answer it. They just kept on reconsidering their answer, but GLM 4.6, that one got it right. But this one is a trickier one when it comes to regex. It can be very confusing for humans, let alone the AI. So this one, it failed on that one there. But now we're going to see if you can actually make some application. So write me a word processor, MS Paint. Last time I called it MS Draw, which confused some people. So MS Paint clone in HTML, 3D universe with spaceship. Spitting out loads of tokens over here. We got over 2,000 tokens. So I'm guessing it's going to be a very, very good demonstration. So we got it already. And this is the work process here. Let's see if it runs. So we can bold. So it is running. Remember the last model I used, it wasn't actually working. Omo, whereas this guy's working. And this guy's MIT. So it's a really, really healthy license to be playing around with it. So left, right, center. You can do lists. So this reminds me of like WordPad. So it's, it's very, very beautiful. You can click save. And it's saving out as a doc file. Whoa, let's see if that works. <laughs> I'm not sure of that. Yowzers. He actually saved it as a Word doc. That is madness. So, wow. That that's. I wasn't expecting it to be formatted correctly. I just want to double check that. Can I open that with text edit? It, it actually never saved it as a Word doc. I got excited there. It saved it as a HTML file, but Microsoft Word was smart enough to be able to import it. But you do have a nice version of of definitely some code that you can build on top of that. So that was, I could say, that's a success. Next up, let's see if it can do MS Paint. Now it's got over 2,500 tokens. Maybe I should have asked it to do Photoshop since this is a, a clever model. And we can see, well, this looks beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna start, this is MS Paint. Wow, it's done it. This is retro, look at that. You can erase. Can I make the brush size, what's this one? Oh, it's a thicker brush. What's that one? A thicker brush as well, erase. That's it, using the thick. So you got different brush sizes, a small one and a big one. You got a raise and you got draw. So I use a big brush, say, yo. 
Yo, I'm like grade A now. Look at that. All right, I'm looking forward to this space.html. So what has happened here? So unfortunately, it did actually have a runtime error. Un uncaught. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to give it the error and see if it can correct itself. So I printed out 4,600 tokens. And unfortunately, it has got the exact same error. So what did it actually do? Let's see. It, it thinks that it should be push dot push. It got a bit lost. I think it's sparse attention mechanism needs probably a little bit of work. Let's switch it up and go to the Q8 version. So again, that one printed very, very similar code, almost 4,000 tokens at 15.95 tokens a second. So let's see if that one worked and no syntax error, unident unexpected identifier three. So that's, that's, that's an even bigger issue. It wasn't even able to include the correct library. Maybe there's some bugs on my side as well that probably needs fixing out to do. But overall, we did get a nice, beautiful MS Paint clone. We got a nice word processor, which almost fooled me into saving a Word doc when it actually was a HTML. Figured out a lot of the programming challenges I threw at it. It didn't know that the surgeon was the boy's father, even though it said it. And um, regarding its beliefs about trashing on Twitter, it just says just try to go and do the high road, which is probably the best advice today. So yeah, great model to watch out for. It's um, also MIT licensed, very, very permissive for commercial use. So, and it's fast, 15 billion parameters. I guess if you're trying to ask it to make an application from scratch, just like all coding models, it's a to-do. It's not going to get it done, but for, you know, trying to debug code and get ideas, it's very, very fast. So I do like that. So let me know what you guys think. It's Mimo V2 Flash. I'm going to be uploading the Q6 version. And hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.